Scrub brush covers the foothills in the distance. Cactus plants basking in the glow of the morning sun grow wild in the baked earth. This is the Sonoran Desert on the outskirts of Phoenix, Arizona. Not far from here, there is a place just as unique as the landscape. This is Carl Hayden High School, famous not for its athletic teams, but its team that builds robots. We're going to have to machine something that fits on the inside. Ah, I thought you were done machining. Now you have to machine something else. Yeah. OK, so you, put it, you need to put an insert in here. Yeah. Meet Farid Odin Lajvardi. Just call him Freddie. Everyone else does. Freddie is program director for the school's Center for Marine Science. He's been teaching here for 26 years. It's not always easy. Read all the headlines from the top of the column all the way down to the bottom. There are 2,000 students from inner city neighborhoods. Most are Latino. English for many is their second language. Some are undocumented immigrants illegally in the United States. But against the odds, Freddie found that building robots could bring them hope and purpose. You know, they say, well, what if I get deported? And I say, well, the question isn't whether you get deported. The question is, what do you get deported as? Do you want to be deported as a garbage collector, a landscaper, or an engineer? Where if you're an engineer, you can get a job in any other country on this planet, except the United States. So the question isn't whether you're deported. It's what are you going to do with the time that you're here? But you are clearly proud that when these students leave here, whether they're, they go to college or not, that they've left with a skill that they're going to be able to get through life. I have students every year that do incredible things, and I just look at them and say, wow, this is so great that you know, we have this program, and we have this legacy, and we can just keep finding kids that are lost and helping them find their future. The team, called Falcon Robotics, wins state and national tournaments on a regular basis, competing against high schools and even universities. There's nothing simple about the bots these kids build, with onboard cameras and sensors and the ability to steer themselves totally autonomous. So how do you operate this? I guess you always say, well, it's autonomous. It's Does autonomous. It runs itself? Yeah. You just put it in the water and say, have a nice day. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what we do. Samantha Nieto will be going to Arizona State University in the fall on a partial scholarship. Right now, she's focused on finishing up the wiring for a robot that will be entered in an underwater competition. Yeah, we take it one step at a time. I know when you look at it and you look at all the wiring, you're like, oh my gosh, what is going on? Yeah. But, <laughs> Yeah, we just do one wire at a time, and we plan it all out. You know, after school, I could be going with my friends or with a boyfriend, but instead I choose to come here from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., and, and we just, we have a lot of fun doing it because you're around a lot of people that are like you that want to go to college and they want to study engineering, and I see that as, like, you know, that's a fun place to be. Armando Chavez, a senior, is working on another. This one will have to dodge obstacles and launch balls at targets, kind of like a video game on wheels. And back here, we're going to have our pivot, um, where the arm um, pivots around here, and the ball, which is right there. You can pass there's the ball. Your, there's the ball, right? Yeah. It's, it's in but, here. Yeah. Well, in the game, they call these boulders. So okay. every every boulder you score, you weaken the tower. Every student on the team is focused on planning, designing, making parts, testing, building, and looking not with fear but with confidence at their futures. I'm in! A college acceptance has made Diana Valenzuela's day. Many of the students are the first generation in their family to go to college. Nearly every student who comes out of the school's robotics program goes to college. These success stories at Carl Hayden have not been lost on the community. Building these sophisticated robots can cost tens of thousands of dollars, money that comes from donations and fundraisers. People like Frank Newperker, himself an engineer and donor of his own company, volunteer time, resources, and knowledge. And these are all the parts that you got, but oh, it's a catapult. Yeah, it's already done. We got these like 20 minutes ago. Nice and straight, right? I'm for the winning. I want to teach them to win because what we're doing is training them to be in a company, a small, stressed company that doesn't have enough money, doesn't have enough resources, um, maybe not even have enough information, that sort of thing. So you've got to be smart in terms of how you work to come out on top because if you don't, you could be looking for a new job. Some of the robots the students are working on will have up to $50,000 in parts in them. Some of the parts the students are 
3D printing and machining themselves right here. It has come a very long way since a plastic robot named Stinky. The PVC glue that we were using is kind of pretty smelly when, when you open it up and once you start gluing it together in a small room and it's pretty stinky in there. Luis Saranda is one of four young men who more than a decade ago shattered expectations, broke stereotypes, and with their robot Stinky, laid the foundation for what the school robotics team is today. Luis had resident status in the United States. The other three, Lorenzo Santillan, Oscar Vasquez, and Christian Arcega, were undocumented immigrants. They were Freddy's 2004 team, a dream team as it turned out. Lorenzo remembers joining, hoping it would keep him out of trouble. I was a bad grade student. I was getting into fights. I was uh, also avoiding coming home because there was a lot of problems here. The team not only kept Lorenzo out of trouble, it made him part of history. Built with $800 and mostly spare parts, they entered Stinky into an underwater competition sponsored by NASA, the U.S. Space Agency. Their competitors were universities, including prestigious MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. The little robot that could and the boys no one thought could not only held their own, but did the unthinkable. They won. So how did winning this competition, beating MIT, change your lives? Overall, it just showed us to stand up for ourselves and to stand up for, for human rights overall. Even today, though, you're taking that message around the country wherever yes, you go, right? Yeah. I'm sharing it because it's easy to forget that we don't have a lot of role models like we do, like who we are. So why not share our story? A story that has, there's no other way to put it, gone viral. There's a book, a documentary called Underwater Dreams, and even a movie starring George Lopez, who plays Freddy, called, of course, Spare Parts. You guys got some ground to make up. The other teams will have more money than you. So you're still short $432.54. And my man ate a couple ice creams on the way in. Can I have an ice cream? Too late. I already wrote the check. The story of Stinky and the four boys didn't bubble to the surface right away. It was a magazine article the next year that first brought them attention. But right after they won and went back to school, it was as if nothing happened. In fact, they even dismantled Stinky. In like our class, we weren't expecting Stinky to be recognized later. So we recycle all our ROVs, all our robots. So poor Stinky's gone. Stinky's frame's still there. That's about the only thing that survived. Everything else has been pretty much uh, replaced. Today, Lorenzo travels the country telling their story, and he and Luis now have a startup catering business. Doing what they love, cooking. I hated my mom's cooking, especially on Thanksgiving. Turkey never came out the way it was on TV, so mom said pretty much, well, then next year you cook, and pretty much I did, and I've been cooking ever since. The other boys, now men on that dream team, are doing just fine too. Oscar Vasquez is in Texas working for a railroad. Christian Arcega is in school in Michigan. Do you see what you did as having really laid a foundation for what the students who came after you have been able to accomplish at Carl Hayden? Overall, it's just showing the, showing undocumented youth that they can do you know, what they said their minds to, no, no matter what, and those students took it and they said, well, if Lorenzo could do it, and he didn't even go into engineering, uh, he could do, we could do it too, and even better. And every year has been improving of us, basically. Luis, Lorenzo, Oscar, and Christian, in a single moment in time, changed the culture at a school desperate for heroes. The thing that those first four kids really did was, is they made it impossible for any other student to come afterwards and say, I can't do this because I'm Latino, or I can't do this because I'm a single, I have a single parent you know, at home, and, or I, we don't have any money. Every year, the kids on the Carl Hayden Falcon Robotics team come with an understanding that much is expected of them. There is history, and the bar has been set high. Yeah. Do you feel the pressure oh, because yeah. of what happened a decade ago? <laughs> yeah. You, um, 
I mean, like, we just, we go to events and then, like, you can see people, like, you can just hear them saying, oh, there's a Falcon Robotics, oh. And, and it's kind of, I mean, it feels good to be looked at like that, but it's kind of intimidating, too. Like, I have to step up and really, like, step up to the plate. What happened in 2004 was one of those moments where, as they say, all the stars align. So I happened to be at the right place at the right time with the right group of kids and fall into winning that got this attention. And you gotta remember, we only beat MIT by one point. Would our lives be different if that one point was the other way around? You wonder, huh? And you wonder if it was simply destined to happen.